Good morning, good morning. Welcome to our online church, Miracle Life Family Church. We're so gl glad that you've taken time to plug in either by Facebook or YouTube, whatever social media that you're using to connect with us. Now, Miracle Life Family Church, we believe in sharing Christ, maturing believers, and changing the world. Now, we meet every Sunday, uh, 08 hours for first service, and 10.30 for second service. So we have two services on a Sunday. So if you are in Lusaka and you want to fellowship with the church, we invite you just to connect with us at Miracle Life Family Church along Zambezi Road in Roma. Well, if, when you come to our church, you'll find a wonderful team from the parking lot into the auditorium, just helping you to make sure that you feel welcomed, valued, and as you feel uh, settled as you connect with us and worship God together. In the service, we'll have a, a worship team and then thereafter we'll have a powerful sermon preached by one of our pastors. This will be a great time for you now, if you're at home, just to get a Bible, get your notebook, get your family together if you have family, and be ready to hear the incorruptible word of God that is able to transform and change your life and my life. So just take time now and stay ready and let's worship God together. God bless you. Good morning, church. Good morning. Come on, let's rise up and praise the Lord together. Hallelujah. Let's go. Manja, manja, manja.
promise that you have spoken, you guaranteed and complete. With every breath you have given to me, I'm going to rise up and sing. Come on. Singing glory, hallelujah, in the highest, we exalt your name. Singing glory, hallelujah, you are worthy. Shout your praise. You've got a record. You've got a record. Proven faithful. Gives me a reason to trust. Yeah. We go my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Lord, I'm going to lift you up. Let's sing. Singing glory. Hallelujah. In the highest, we exalt your Sing glory. Singing glory. to the going down of the same. We glorify the name of the Lord. Thank you, God. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just lift up your voice. Just lift up your hands and just worship God this morning. He's worthy. Thank you, Father. Come on, let's sing. Who is this King? Who is this King?
Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. We worship him this morning. We worship his name. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's sing that out together. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath.
together. In your own words, just declare that to the Lord. Pour out your praise to Him. Pour out your praise to our King. He deserves it this morning. Come on, just raise your voice. Pour out our praise to you. It's your breath in our lives. So we pour out. just lift up our hands and bless the name of the Lord. He's a great God. He's a good God. He has loved us with an everlasting love. His forgiveness is real. And we're standing here because of His mercy. Jesus, we give you all the glory. Jesus, we love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your grace that you continue to multiply toward us. God, we worship you. We worship you. Oh, we worship you, God. We love you, we love you, we love you. Oh, God, we honor your name this day. It is you, God, that has saved us, loved us with an everlasting love. We stand here forgiven, qualified to stand in your presence. As far as east from west, so far have you removed our transgression and we stand on the merits of Jesus Christ. God, we bless you. Oh, we love you, we love you. We honor your name, God. Oh, oh. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. And we declare that we exist for you. We live for you. We're here, God, because you created us to worship you for no other reason but to give you honor, to give you adoration in the land of the living. Honor your name, God. Hallelujah. Receive the praises of your people. God, we declare our love for you. And we're just loving you back because you first loved us. And we thank you for your love that has qualified us to stand in your presence. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you honor. Somebody just give Jesus a shout of praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, God, we honor you. We bless your name, God. You are real to us. You are true to us. And we bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that every need in this place is met. Because when you show up in a place, God, things change. Situations are transformed. God, we thank you that diseases are healed right now in the name of Jesus. We bless your name and we honor you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Oh, yes. He's worthy of our praises. Hallelujah. That's right. Now, before you sit down, I don't know if you're going to high five or fist bump or just say hi to somebody seated next to you. Five people, eight people, whichever number you can manage, that will be awesome. <laughs> All right. So good to be in church this morning. Now, if you are here for the very first time, you're a visitor at Miracle Life Family Church, first time guest, please just wave your hand. We want to give you an MLFC welcome. I see that hand over here. Thank you so much. I see hands all over there. I see that hand over there. Hallelujah. Thank you for that hand over there at the back. Now, our visitors, if you didn't make a stop at the Welcome Center while you were entering the, the building through the foyer, please do so at the end of the service. It is located in the foyer to the left. As you exit the doors, you'll see a, a pop-up banner that says, First Time Guests. Please make a stop there. We just want to connect with you a little bit more, get to know you a little bit more, and answer any questions you may have about Miracle Life Family Church. Amen. One more time, let's just welcome our visitors. Yeah. 
It is so good that you came to spend time in the presence of God with us this morning. Church, I now invite your attention to the screens for the video announcements. Good morning, Miracle Life Family Church. These are your announcements for this week. Katulema Mapoma weds Beauty Daka on Saturday, the 28th of September at 14 hours at the 360 Convention Center. Parenting is a journey and it's one of the hardest, if not the hardest jobs that God has given us. In this interesting journey, many children are faced with and affected by social media, drugs, alcohol, pornography, masturbation, and other addictions. The Next Gen Family and School for Life Ministries invite all parents to our parenting seminar on Saturday, 21st September from 9 hours to 12 hours in Classroom 1. Sign up at the School for Life table outside the foyer after the service via the website or the mobile app. The Global Leadership Summit will be taking place on Saturday, the 5th of October at Mulungushi Conference Center from 8.30 to 17 hours. Take time to learn from nine amazing speakers, including our very own Pastor Walker Schurz. Sessions will be taking place both live and virtually. Register now for just 350 kwacha per person, including lunch, water, and materials. Don't miss out. Sign up for the conference on the MLFC website or the mobile app. And remember, when leaders grow, everyone benefits. For more information about what's happening at Miracle Life Family Church, be sure to refer to the bulletin tab on our mobile app, visit our website, and follow us on social media. Enjoy the service. Receive tithes and offerings. Usher, uh, ushers are in the aisles. If you need assistance with envelopes, just show by raising your hand. They'll be glad to assist you with that if you want to designate your giving. There's a QR code that you can scan with your phone and it will take you to all of the options uh, on the MLFC website. And you can make use of any one of those channels. Uh, mobile options, direct bank transfer, and there's a secure giving box in the foyer that's available even during the week. And you can also make use of the, the kiosk as well. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. It reads, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day, until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart. For you are, you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. So we see two words there, partners and partakers. The Philippians were a church that supported Paul's ministry. And they supported him in so many ways. But one of the main ones they did this was through their consistent financial giving, financial help that they gave to Paul. And that's a great blessing because not all of them could go. But they sent him. And the gospel was reaching places and touching lives because Paul was sent. Through their giving, something big was accomplished for the, for the kingdom of God. Amen. That is exactly what we're doing when we give. We are enabling a lot of things to happen. And it's a great blessing to be part of what God is accomplishing through our giving. Amen. And I'm so glad that Miracle Life is that church. That just continues to overflow, just continues to, to be a blessing. Hallelujah. So as we give this morning, let us be reminded that we are partakers. Hallelujah. And partners with God as he is accomplishing his mission in the world. Amen. So let's give with that realization this morning. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much 
for enabling us to be a part of what you are doing. You are accomplishing great and mighty things through the giving of the saints that are giving cheerfully, that are giving knowing that this is adding value to the eternal lives of people, God Almighty. We thank you so much for this privilege. God, we thank you. We pray that you will bless the gift and the giver this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. My name is Emmanuel Sichula. Yes, and I attended the Project Exodus course. I was struggling with uh, marijuana, codeine, and pure addiction. I've been struggling with it for close to six years. Yeah, it all started in high school. Yeah, high school. My addiction really affected my, my whole family. It affected the people closest to me. It affected my, my young sister, my parents, my grandparents, my grandparent rather. Yeah. Um, I really didn't like what it did to my grandma because it, uh, even in her old age, it, it made her depressed. And so it made me stand up as a man to say, I really need to change my life. So I found out uh, about Project Exodus uh, through the course I was doing Changes That Heal. So the facilitator of Changes That Heal is, what, is, a, is a person that had mentioned it to, to me to say, because he heard my cry out in one of the sessions. So he said, um, there's a course that's going to be coming up in February. Yeah. So I decided to take up the course. I thought I wouldn't go, I wouldn't uh, do the whole 16 weeks. I'll probably drop out in the 10th week or, or probably miss a session. But I was quite consistent with uh, all my 16 weeks. I attended all 16 weeks. And I learned. Um, quite a lot in the Project Exodus course. I learned about uh, the root causes of that led to my addictions. I noticed that uh, during the course, my, the way I, carry, I, carry, I started to carry myself was different. My relationship with my parents, my grandma, my mom and dad, my sisters and brothers changed as well as my aunties, uncles, and cousins, they started to see me as a more responsible person in the 16 weeks that I did with Project Exodus because it gave me the confidence and uh, hope for the future every time I would come for my sessions. What the Project Exodus course revealed to me about God's love is that God is sovereign, is a sovereign God, and God loves everyone. He shows um, this love that no other human being can show to a person. I feel short and uh, I thought no one could see the good in me, but I had a God up there that saw a new creature. Yes, a new creature. My advice to anybody that's out there struggling with addiction and uh, doesn't know where to seek help, they, they can get it from the Project Exodus course. Take the board step like I did and uh, God will see, th see you through all your 16 weeks because it's, uh, yeah. God will see you through all your 16 weeks, like he saw me through all the 16 weeks. Without fail, my attendance was really good, yeah. Project Exodus is an ongoing program that runs throughout the year that provides an understanding of addiction and helps to explore the reasons behind its occurrence in one's life. The goal of the course is to provide a path to recovery and wholeness from God's perspective. The program is now open for participants to join every week on Fridays. But please note 
that the program is only open to members of Miracle Life Family Church. Sign up at the School for Life table outside the foyer after the service via our website or the mobile app. Praise the Lord. Isn't that awesome to hear what God is doing in people's lives? Wow, I don't, I don't see Emmanuel, but I'd give him a high five for being bold like that and sharing what God is doing in his life. And so please be aware that you, you don't have to be addicted to stuff things that are holding you back and things that are keeping you from God's highest and best in your life. And so Project Exodus is a place like you hear where God's truth will galvanize your life and, and you'll find the strength to overcome with other believers. Amen? All right. So we're going to start something next, the next three weeks. Oh, first of all, where's, is Mafia here? Omega? Omega's here, hey? Or they're, maybe they're out. Anyway, thanks to Mafia and Omega for doing a, such a splendid job last week on worship. Wasn't that awesome? Uh, yeah, I watched on YouTube. And uh, if you weren't here, make sure you get that. It was such a, such a help for us to, to know how we respond to God and love him back for all he's done. So we're going to look at questions, questions that you have about Christian life, about God, about how to apply the Bible in our lives. And you know, over the years, just hanging out in the lobby, different uh, church members would say, hey, Pastor, what do you think about this verse? Or, hey, I'm not sure what to do about this. And I know a lot of what I've learned in the Bible has come from my own questions of struggling with reconciling this and that in the Bible. And then it causes you to dig into God's word. And so that's what we're going to do over the next few weeks is we've taken questions that you submitted and we're going to just basically open up God's word to see what answers he has for us. And so I hope that what we'll do in the next three weeks is that we'll see what God says and not advice from Pastor Walker, okay? Advice are like noses. Everyone has one, Okay. <laughs> And advice is not as nearly as good as the unchangeable truth of God's word. Okay? So we're going to look at a, a few to start off with that we're not going to answer, but you're going to see why. Okay. Question number one, how should Christians balance faith, healing, and medical treatment? Really important question. We had a sermon two weeks ago, and we took 45 minutes and we broke that down. I'm, I would imagine this question came before we did that sermon. So what were the first three questions? If you go to YouTube in the morning or if you go to the Miracle Life Facebook page, you're going to see these questions and then you're going to see links under there of sermons that have been done at Miracle Life that address these questions in more detail. So we're not trying to blow you off. We just have resources that will answer it. In, in much more detail than we can do this morning. Okay, next question, uh, similar. How should Christians handle wealth, material possessions, and ethical dilemmas in the light of Jesus' teaching and balance investing in their future family and the kingdom of God? So two years ago, we did a sermon called God and Money, a series, and we did it for nine weeks. We just kept going and going and going. And every single one of those phrases we covered. So again, YouTube, Facebook page, will have the links to that. And then lastly, can one lose their salvation? And if you remember the last sermon we did in the book of Hebrews that we did together as pastoral staff, the last sermon we looked at passages in Hebrews about apostasy. And you will have the link for that as well. All right. So let's go to the first question that we're actually going to answer. <laughs> How does one balance the struggle between sin, repentance, and grace in daily life, especially when change isn't immediate? All right, so you hear the question, struggle against sin, repentance, grace. So the, the follow-up question that this person asked is, is it acceptable to continue living in sin after receiving Christ Due to God's grace. And so what we can hear from this question is there's a struggle against sin and temptation. There's repentance. 
but it seems as though their experience is that they're not making progress, okay? In that video we heard, Emmanuel mentioned that he was involved in, in taking drugs for six years, all right? I would imagine somewhere along those six years, he wanted to stop or he wanted to see a change, all right? So the question is, well, because of God's grace, should I just go ahead and continue and have sin as a lifestyle and then I can just get forgiven of it, okay? Now, this is a question that people have had for ages, but the really, uh, really cool thing is it is a question that the Holy Spirit anticipated that we would have in Romans chapter 5 and 6. And we're going to look at that and we're going to see what is God's answer to this question, and, and then how can we apply that? All right, Romans 5, 8, we'll start reading in verse 18. And in this passage, it's talking about our righteousness. And righteousness is a standing before God that we are innocent, that God accepts us, all right? And the Bible refers to righteousness as a gift from God, meaning we can't earn it, all right? So God makes us righteous. We can't earn righteousness. We can't earn right standing, which is very, very different than every religion in the world. You, you become holy because you work for it. And God accepts you because of the good deeds you've done. It motivates you to keep doing good deeds, okay? So Romans 5.18, it says, Therefore, as one trespass, or sin, led to condemnation, punishment for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. So Paul's contrasting Adam's sin and the work of Jesus. Verse 19, For as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. Okay, so who's the, who's the one person's right, righteousness or obedience that made us righteous? Not your mama, not your grandpa, Jesus, right? So Jesus' obedience makes us righteous. Verse 20, now the law came in to increase the trespass. Paul had already stated that unless you knew right from wrong, you wouldn't know wrong was wrong. And so the law did that, clarified God's standards. But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So he makes this where sin increased, grace went even higher. Okay, So that's kind of where the question is, is where, well, if God's grace is greater than my sin, maybe I should just keep on sinning, all right? Verse 1 of chapter 6, what shall we say then? So based on chapter 5, are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? Isn't that amazing? A question in 2024 is literally from the Bible, okay? Are we, are, should we just continue in sin because of grace? By no means. Another translation says, God forbid. So the, the, the Greek language there is like really strong of no way. How can we who died to sin still live in it? And then he, he uses the illustration of our, our water baptism. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in what kind of life? Newness of life, not oldness of life. So we, we're not raised from sin to sin. We're raised from sin and death to a new life, a life that reflects the righteousness of God, a life that reflects God's love and his character and his integrity. Amen. Okay, so is the answer, if I'm struggling with sin, is it to give up? 
No, no, no. Okay, and you and I are living in a day and an age where many, many Christians and many, many pastors and many, many denominations that have kind of gotten tired of God's standard and they've lowered God's standard to what we want, to what we like, okay? Rather, no, no, God's standard is what it is and the Holy Spirit will empower us to live there, okay? I'm so glad that the person who answered that, asked that question talked about the struggle of sin because how many know there are quite a few sinners that are not struggling with sin? <laughs> There's no, they would never say the struggle is real, okay? They just live it openly and with a smile on their face, okay? So Christians do just that. We struggle against sin. Look at 1 Corinthians 15. I want to look at a few principles in the New Testament about how we as believers, we are recreated, we are righteous, how do we struggle and win over sin? 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be deceived. Now, here's an important thing in the Bible. Whenever the Bible says don't be deceived, you know what that means is? It's possible. Maybe even likely that this is an area where people do get deceived. So don't be deceived. Evil company or companions corrupts good habits or a good lifestyle, okay? So if you're struggling with sin, as we, we heard in this question, one area that the Bible would say to take stock of, who are your friends? Who are your friends? Are they encouraging you to struggle against sin or are they passing you the marijuana? Are they forwarding you the porn on your WhatsApp group? Evil company, evil companions will corrupt your lifestyle. Okay? And so when you want to make a break and when you want to change and God wants that for you, you are going to have to restructure your friend group. Okay? And, and here's the, the wonderful thing about friends. Friends are the family that you get to choose. You don't get to choose your family. And when there's a family gathering, all of us, all of us in this room, we sometimes get a deep breath. Say, oh, Lord, God, help me not to open my mouth. Right? Lord, help me to love this one. They are... Uh, EGR, extra grace required, relatives, right? <clears throat> but your friends don't choose you, you choose them. And choose wisely, okay? And there are people that you need to get out of your inner circle because they're hurting your life. Does not mean you hate them. It does not mean you uh, act ugly to them. It just means you stop hanging out with them. Stop it. Okay, I've certainly had to make that tough decision a few times, all right? So that's one area for overcoming sin. The next one is in the very next verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. Notice the order. You don't stop sinning in order to awake to righteousness. Awake to righteousness. Realize who you are. Didn't you hear Emmanuel's testimony? that he said, God sees me as a new creature because probably he didn't feel like one. Maybe other people didn't see him as one, but he began to realize, I'm a new creature in Christ. God sees me this way, and he lives up to who he is. And that really is a huge New Testament strategy of overcoming sin is realize who you are and then your, your lifestyle will begin to follow in those lines. Awake to righteousness, do not sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Another thing for Christians in overcoming sin is you need to believe the right thing 
about sin. Okay, when I was a young person, not saved, but yet going to church, and my mom was so strict, I had a hard time sinning to the to the extent that my heart wanted to sin. That that that's a good way of saying it. All right, is you know I, I would I would. S- go to bed at night thinking of my, my friends who were drinking and sleeping around and stuff and I'm thinking, why does my mom always block me? She blocks my progress, you know? Um, <laughs> boy, did she ever. Um, I don't know if I've ever told you this story in church, um, but there was a whole bunch of, I went to a Christian school, we were all <laughs> unsaved, okay, and... There was, I think it was my second year, and all the guys were going to go to have a sleepover at this guy's house that was near where in the girl's house, and all the girls were going to go over there, and we had already, we had already paired up, okay, and we were going to meet at a barn in the middle of the night, and we were not going to be praying for the nations, I can tell you that, all right. <laughs> And, and the, the girl that I was paired up with, she's a Facebook friend. She's married. She's got kids. And I just think, God, thank God you delivered me, God, from that. Um, but anyway, it was all planned out. And my mom, somehow, by the Holy Ghost, she stopped me from going. Thank God she stopped me from going, all right? Why were we, we, were, why were we even talking about this? All right, okay, I know, I know, okay. <laughs> Hebrews 3, um, If you believe that sin is good, you're deceived. You're deceived. If you believe that sin is going to add to your life and bring you joy, you haven't seen sin close up. Okay? Now, I have the real privilege of being a pastor for decades, and I've pretty much seen the end result of almost every sin. And it is death, and it is destruction, and it is ruin. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. God warns us that sin destroys your life. Okay, look at at Hebrews uh, 3, 13. It says, exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of, of sin. Notice it's deceitful, isn't it? Eve saw that the tree, the fruit was good. It's going to make you wise. It's going to bless my life. Did it? No. But that's what she believed. That's the deceitfulness of sin. Okay? So have a good view of sin. So don't just go to, don't discover sin from experience or from what your friends are saying. Go to God's word about sin. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible is uh, Proverbs 5. This helps me a lot and has helped me over the years because things that look good are not good sometimes, all right? Proverbs 5, verse 1, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. Lend your ear to my understanding that you may preserve discretion. Let your lips, uh, and your lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey. Her mouth is smoother than oil. So honey and oil in that day were excellent things. But in the end, everybody say the end. In the end, she is bitter as wormwood sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lay hold of hell, lest you ponder her path of life. Her ways are unstable. You do not know them. Two chapters over, uh, Proverbs 7, 6, for at the window of my house I looked through the lattice and I saw among the simple and perceived among the youths a young man devoid of understanding. Today we would call him stupid, all right? Passing along the street near her corner, and he took the path to her house. In the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark, and there 
a woman met him with the attire of a harlot. They still sell that brand. Attire of a harlot. Good Lord Almighty, do they sell it. All right. And a crafty heart. She was loud and rebellious. Her feet would not stay at home. At times she was outside. At times in the open square, lurking at every corner. She caught him and kissed him before even talking to him. With an impudent face, she said to him, I have peace offerings with me. Oh, wow, she's from the youth group. How about that? Today I've paid my vows. So, I've, so I've, I came out to meet you diligently to seek your face. I have found you. I've spread my bed. Oh, here we go, a bed. Colored coverings of Egyptian linen. I've perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love till morning. Let us delight ourselves with love, for my husband is not at home. Yep, she's experienced. She knows what she's doing. He has gone on a long journey, has taken a bag of money with him. He will come home on the appointed day. With her enticing speech, she caused him to yield. With her flattering lips, she seduced him. And immediately he went after her as an ox goes to the slaughter, as a fool to the correction of the stocks, till an arrow struck his liver, as a bird hastens to the snare. He did not know it would cost his life. Every man in this room should have that scripture on their refrigerator. Okay. So why, you say, that's scary. Exactly, exactly. God's trying to say, this is sin. The movies don't say this is what happens. Your friends don't say what this has happened. This is what happens, all right? So we can, we can use the word of God to help get us out of the deceitfulness of sin, okay? Proverbs talks about if, if you have gained money, through immoral, illegal, unethical ways, you will lose it. Well, I don't know if I believe that. You know, the Bible says it. You just read the newspaper almost every day, and you'll see someone, again, losing their money based on immorality. All right, next question. What are practical ways to grow and strengthen faith daily, maintain faith amidst daily demands and prevent complacency in the Christian walk? Isn't that a great question? I think we've all, so I believe that would resonate with, it resonates with me, all right? So in the New Testament, because they're talking about what are things that I can participate in on purpose that will help my Christian life to grow? And, and I love, love, they use the word daily twice, okay? So they're talking about a lifestyle. Let's go to Colossians chapter three, and this would be a, a, a few places we could go to that would show a, a biblical pattern of how Christians grow, all right? So kind of just listen, and we'll, we'll go back and, and, and look at some of these. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. I love it that, Paul starts here, before he tells you what to do, he tells you who you are. Who are you? You're the elect of God. You are holy. You are beloved. So from that place of truth and awareness, now do some things practically. Put on, meaning we can put some things on. These, these wonderful scriptural qualities. Verse 13, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body and be thankful. All right, so already we see, know who you are in Christ. That's going to happen by you spending time in God's word. That's going to happen by you spending time, especially in the epistles, to know what God has done for you in Christ, 
Okay, so it's, it's a discovery process, okay? Then we see all these one another's, bear with one another, forgiving one another, okay? Um, teaching one another. We're gonna see in verse 16, we, we teach and we sing and we, we are together one another. So evidently, for you to grow in Jesus, you need other Christians in your life, all right? So the one another, do some stock, do some inventory, all right, I know right after this service, we're going to have close to 500 young people in Impact and Merge that are going to do, on purpose, one another. They're going to be with one another. They're going to be talking to each other. They're going to be praying for each other. They're going to be among believers who want to be believers, right? Because how many know once you leave this gate, it's a little bit different, isn't it? Okay, so we, we come together, and that is a huge, huge part of our Christian walk and our Christian um, fellowship, all right? Verse 17, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to the Father through him. So we see things like the word of God in your life. So a Bible reading plan, a, a way for the scriptures to be digested in your life. All of the School for Life classes that we have at Miracle Life are Bible-infused, all right? They get the Bible into your mind and into your heart. If you really want to go next, next level, sign up for Rama Zambia. And for two years, you can study the Bible with other believers from all kind of different churches all over our city, okay? Fellowship. Be in a connection group. Meaning, they know who, you'd say, oh, Pastor, no, I'm in a connection group. Well, let me ask you, do they know your name at the connection group? Well, no, Pastor, yeah, I haven't been there in three years. Okay, get committed. Participate. Oh, I tell you the things that happen. Prayer. So the word of God is God speaking to you. Prayer is you speaking to God. All right? And in prayer, God also speaks back to you. But spend time in prayer. Uh, have seasons of prayer, times of prayer, but then make prayer your lifestyle in traffic, in situations, just under your breath, God, help me not to punch this person in the face, God. Huh? Yeah. Um, pray. Another thing is to share your faith, to share what God has given you with other people. Now, I'll just, this is my experience. It might not be your experience. Other than the word of God, that's the number one thing that's caused me to grow in Christianity and into being like Jesus, is sharing with other people. Because I guess I just have a natural tendency towards selfishness, towards not being with people. And so the times that I get to share my faith, that I get to interact with people that are hurting and broken, it's good for me. It grows my heart, stretches me, all right? So do that on purpose. Be committed to a local church. If this is not your home church, find a local church. Be committed. Let, make sure people know you are there and that you're a blessing. All right? Another question. All right? How should believers deal with doubt and wavering faith? All right? So when, I, when, we, when we hear doubt and wavering faith kind of sounds like someone's praying, isn't it? They're seeking God. They're, they're, there's a petition or something, that an expectation that they have from God, but yet <clears throat> in their heart, there's doubt. Is that really going to happen? Did God really say? And when we, when we think of wavering faith, you, you kind of think of things that are up and down, right? James talked about the man who wavers is like someone at sea. It's up and down, okay? So how do we deal with doubt and wavering faith? I think, I love this question. I think the first one is implied is that, in a sense, admit it. Realize, like the guy with Jesus, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, okay? And how many of you know if you ask God, help me with my unbelief, he will help you with your unbelief, all right. But there is a way that he will do that. Um, we have a great example in the Bible of Peter 
when he stepped out on God's word, all right? Jesus was walking on the water, and Peter realized, I'm a disciple, he's a rabbi, what he does, I do, because that's how it worked back then. And he, and he said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Whatever you do, I get to do also. I promise you on the DVD in heaven, when, when, Peter, when Peter said, Lord, bid me to come, I promise you, Jesus, there's a smile on his face. That's my boy. <laughs> That's my Peter. That's why I picked you, big guy. All right? You're a handful. Man, do I have to talk to you a lot. But you're the only guy who asked. Everybody else is just going, wow, Jesus, he's walking on the water. Peter's like, I'm going to do it too. Right? So Jesus said, come. How did he walk on the water? He walked on the word of Jesus. How do you walk on the water? How do you step out in faith? On the word of God. Not the word of mama. Not the word of a prophet on YouTube. Okay? But you step out in faith based on what God has said. All right? But we also know that when Peter was walking on the water, he saw the waves. And he began to sink. He got his eyes off Jesus and what Jesus said, and he looked at the circumstance. All right? So you're, you're seeing that God says, whatever you put your hand to, I will bless it. And so, Father, uh, you really can't bless much if I'm not employed, if I don't have a business. So, Lord, I am trusting you to, to help me to empower me in this business. Lord, I'm trusting you to help me to find a job. That's what I believe you have for me. And then the waves start coming, right? People don't hire. Your friend in HR left for another country. Okay? Oh, God, is this going to happen? And the faith that was there, it feels like, whoosh, it's gone. Okay? So how do we, how do we keep faith in our heart? Well... It's, it's not a mystery, all right? Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by what? Not by impartation. Not by the laying on of hands, okay? Not by a special anointing. They're, those are all some, some great things. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the BBC? Huh? Hearing gossip? No, faith comes by hearing, and it's important what you're hearing, hearing by the word of God. So here's the wonderful thing, is doubt and wavering faith is curable. It is fixable. One of the greatest just little lines of, of, of advice I've heard along these lines was Kenneth e. Hagin said, before you pray, before you pray, not after you pray, but before you pray, look to God's word and what does God say about your situation? Your prayer life needs to be informed by the word of God. So many people in the Bible, when they prayed, they prayed scripture. They prayed the promises of God. They prayed what God said. Okay, because faith is not a wish. Okay, I've got, I've got plenty of wishes in my life. All right, plenty of them that I would love for them to come to pass. There is no Bible that I can put my wish upon. You follow me? All right, I wish I wasn't so disorganized. Well, where's the promise about that? There's no promise, right? I, I wish that after 30 years, I'm, I was still not a terrible golfer. I wish. Well, the Lord says nothing. <laughs> the Lord says nothing, okay? So not everything in life is fixed by a scripture, okay? Right? Okay, so find out what God says about your situation. Let that get into your heart and then place your faith on what God says. Amen. Amen. All right. So, and it'll help you through the waves and the circumstances and the ups and downs of life.
All right, next question. Should or how should believers deal with feeling overwhelmed by circumstances, including issues like depression and mental health? All right, so I, I, I'd like to consider those a bit separate, all right? Overwhelmed by circumstances, okay? My wife and I just decided in the last couple days, we are now overwhelmed by load shedding, okay? We are finished, okay? It's, uh, it's not a joke, it's not funny. The fridge stinks of rotten food and we're just finished, okay? So overwhelmed. I, I'm not depressed, but I am overwhelmed, okay? Especially when they turn the power on at zero two for one hour. What do you think I'm going to be doing at zero two? Oh my gosh. Anyway, all right. Hallelujah. If you work at Zesco, we love you. We love you. We love you. We really do. You're, you're, you, it's not your fault that Kariba is dry. Okay. So overwhelmed by circumstances. We've probably all been there, right? Then there are things like depression. And I'll explain it based on my lay knowledge of, of what I think that is. But here's a great, great scripture that is also a pattern in scripture in many, many of the Psalms of how do we deal with being overwhelmed? How do we deal with being where, where our heart just feels heavy or, or de depression is kind of when darkness has almost surrounded you, all right? Psalm 3, verse 1. Lord, so first of all, who are you talking to? You're talking to the Lord, all right? You're talking to the Lord, all right? Uh, you posting on Facebook is not a prayer, all right? Number, verse 1, Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. Now, what we understand, this is David being chased by Absalom and Absalom's rebellious army, is this was real. This was not David uh, overreacting to something, right? You know, if, 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 if you're depressed uh, because you're a Man United follower, that, that's not really depression. Okay, just, just get a different jersey. That's all you have to do, okay? <laughs> Just get a different jersey. We'll know why you did it. It's okay. All right. But this is real. So first, the first thing we see is, how, what do you do when you're overwhelmed? Talk to God. Go to God. Tell God how you feel. He can handle it. All right. But here's another really, really important thing is, don't stop the prayer in verse 2. Don't just keep going one and two and one and two. Oh, God, it's so terrible. Oh, God, it's so terrible. All right. I heard it. there was a guy in the 70s, he, uh, Sunday night at church, and he got up and he gave a prophecy and he said, Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Great, great tribulation is coming on the earth. There will be fear. And as he's prophesying this, he is getting more worked up and kind of afraid. And he said, great fear will come on the earth. Even I, the Lord your God, am afraid. <laughs> Aren't you glad God is not afraid? All right. So, so here's the pattern. Go to God. Go to God with the problem. But then pivot. Pivot. Verse 3. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield for me. Why? Because you said so. My glory and the one who lifts up my head. Why? Because you said so. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. How do I know he hears me? Because he said so. So there is a reality of what we're facing. Where there is a reality of, you got fired from your job. There is a reality of, a spouse walked out the door and they'd have no intention of coming back. That is real and that is hurtful and that is overwhelming. Go to God. 
go to God. Don't go to a bottle. Don't go to a pill. Don't go to the nightclub. Okay, because what people do is they feel bad and they don't want to feel bad. Okay? And so there are temporary measures in this earth that will make you feel good. All right? Many, many people drink to forget. Why are pubs more full on Friday night and Saturday night? Because of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Because of the stuff of life and the, and the junk that they've gone through. And now, oh, well, problem is none of your problems went away. You're just out 500 quacha. That's a, that's a small bar tab now in Lusaka. All right. So you pivot and you go to God. You know who God is. You know what he says about you. And you, and you trust him to be who he says he is. In the darkness. In the, while your heart is still troubled. All right? You believe that God can help and you expect him to be that way. All right? Again, please, as Christians, avoid temporary things that will make you feel good. Whether that's alcohol. Whether that is a, a bed with someone who is not your spouse, all right? Sexual pleasure. Now, when it comes to depression, and this is my, again, my limited understanding of depression, is when, oh, when you feel overwhelmed, but it's permanent. You feel like you can't get out, you can't get up, all right? It, is, it, is, it disables your life, okay? And sometimes uh, clinical depression also comes with uh, something that's affecting your body, sometimes the chemicals of your mind, all right? And so if it is depression or even if it's close to depression, please, please go to God, turn to him, pray Psalm 3, and seek out a Bible-based Christian mental health care provider. Not a secular one, a Bible-based, all right? There, there are a number in this church Okay? And there are others outside of Miracle Life. And they have helped people just like you to get out and to stay out. Okay? And so there are, there are uh, biblical and natural ways to help you come up out of depression. Okay? And yes, prayer, but there are also some, some wonderful um, medical and, and psychological ways to help your life. All right. Last two questions. How does one clearly hear God's voice and interpret signs or dreams? How does a Christian know if God or the Holy Spirit is speaking when they don't feel or hear anything? How can believers cultivate a deeper relationship with God, discern his will, and know they are praying in line with his will, especially when God seems silent? All right, these were two separate questions, but they're very similar, aren't they? Okay, it's about discerning God's will. Knowing, God, is, is this really you leading me? Or, God, I'm, I'm asking, but I don't think you're answering. I don't really hear anything. Okay, so let's look at a scripture. And this would be, to me, is one of the most foundational scriptures when it comes to these questions. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. The sons of God. Led by who? Led by the Spirit of God. Sometimes Christians are led by circumstances. Sometimes Christians are led by emotions. Sometimes Christians are led by pressure from other people uh, whom, whom they deem as important in their life, many times a family member, okay? Sometimes people are led by uh, someone that they consider to be a spiritual leader, a pastor, a bishop, a prophet, or something like that. And so whatever they say, I will, I will do it, okay? Uh, there are places I've heard 
thank God this never happened at Miracle Life, but you know, a prayer meeting where the, the person with the microphone says, you and you, you're supposed to get married to each other. All right, that's, uh, I want to be led, but I'm, I think God will let me know if that's my wife. Okay, so as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these, these people, these believers, they're children of God. So what that tells me is, is to be led by the Spirit of God is a birthright. It is part of my family inheritance in God. So if I'm a child of God, I expect to be led by God. I expect to be led by God. Well, I've not been perfect. It doesn't say if I've been perfect. It says, am I a son of God? Yes, I am. So therefore, I'm led by God. So I can have confidence in the Holy Spirit to lead me. It's his job. It's his role in my life, among others. Jesus said, when I go, don't worry, I'm not going to leave you like an orphan. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And he will be with you, and he shall be in you. He shall show you things to come. Reveal to you things that you need to know. So if I'm going to be led by the Spirit of God, that means I, know, I need to know where does the Holy Spirit live. Okay, Does he live on the top of the mountain? I'm going to the top of the mountain, I'm pouring in oil and wine, and I'm going to seek God on the mountain. Well, God doesn't live on the mountain. If he lived on the mountain, go to the mountain. Well, I'm going to Lagos, and I'm going to hear from God. Well, he doesn't live in Lagos. Where does he live? In you, praise the Lord. You did better than first service. All right. So I look for leading on the inside. On the inside. Now, I'm not talking about following your heart. Because uh, it might just be your weird idea. Okay. Okay. But what is the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you what is he saying now here's the cool thing who wrote the bible they, they were moved by god used human authors that were moved by the spirit of god so the holy spirit wrote the bible so he's not confused so many many times his leading will be a verse there was a time years ago where i was man i was seeking god about a, a problem and it was about a year and a half and I was binding and loosing and then I'd loose and bind and then I'd pull down strongholds and then I'd try to rip the devil's head off and I mean I, I was I was exhausted nothing was changing and I was praying along these lines and and still small voice Holy Spirit on the inside of me says have you forgiven that person that was involved in this situation. Huh. And I just started kind of, um, I'm, I wasn't born yesterday. If he's asking, then I guess he knows the answer to that question. And uh, no, no, I haven't forgiven him because of rah, 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 and, and, da, 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 da. and they need to get what's coming and they've come against the man of God. <laughs> And I've seen enough Nigerian movies to know when you come against God's man, you're going to turn into a frog and smoke's going to come out of you. It's going to be bad news for you, China. All right. I love those movies. I must say I love those movies. <laughs> so the Holy Spirit was leading me. How? With the word of God. Forgive one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. That's a Bible verse, isn't it? So he was giving me a command that I needed that was in line with Scripture. So if you ever get what you think is a leading that is contrary to Scripture, well, I just, you know, I just feel, I feel led that I, I, I don't go to church anymore. I, I just, that's how God's leading me. No, he's not. He can't lead you. He might lead you to go to a different church. That's fine, but if he, he would never lead you to disobey the Bible. All right, so 
The more you know the word, the more you will discern the Holy Spirit. The more you'll recognize his voice because he sounds exactly like the Bible. Okay, so I would, I would highly commend this book to you. Um, it might be gone because I mentioned in the first service, we'll try to get more or you can get it online or something. But it's by Kenneth e. Hagen, How to Be Led by the Spirit of God. And it's just an incredible in-depth study of all the ways that God leads us based on the word of God. All right, And it'll help you to have expectations. Now, another practical way that I would give you that is so, so helpful when it comes to being led by the Spirit is to, in your personal walk with God, or as Jesus said, you know, when you close the closet and you're praying, is spend time praying in the Holy Spirit. Spend time praying in other tongues, okay? 1 Corinthians 14, 2. In 1 Corinthians 14, is talking about tongues and interpretation of tongues in a public meeting and the use of tongues in private. And Paul is kind of toggling between those two and, and teaching this church that had some misunderstandings. It wasn't because they weren't speaking in tongues, but they didn't understand some things. 1 Corinthians 14, 2, it says, He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. All right, this is not a, a language that's understandable by people. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. Who speaks mysteries? The one speaking in other tongues. In the Spirit, mysteries. That word there, in another translation, says divine secrets. Well, it's a secret to you, isn't it? It's not a secret to God. Everything is open with him, with him we have to do. Okay. So when I pray in other tongues, there's, there are multiple benefits, but one of them is I am praying heavenly secrets. The Holy Spirit is empowering me, not through my mind, but by him to speak out and to pray things that God knows. Oh, and I tell you, my wife and I, ever since we've been married, when we approach a decision that's going to have some implications, we make sure that we kind of budget more time in our life to pray in tongues, to pray together in the Spirit about that situation. Yes, Paul said, I'll pray with the understanding, I'll pray in the Spirit. I'll praise with the understanding, I'll Praise in the Spirit, meaning I, I do both, all right? And both are appropriate. So we'll start out with what we know and then say, God, you know, there's stuff we don't know. God, help us to see what we don't see. And we'll just begin to have extended times praying in the Holy Ghost. Look at Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Now, remember, where does the Holy Spirit live? He lives inside of us, all right? How does the Holy Spirit express himself? Through our bodies, Okay, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The gifts of the Spirit that the, that the Holy Spirit expresses, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, how does he do that? Through human instruments, okay? Romans 8, uh, 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. We have more than one. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. What's the weakness here? I don't know what to pray there's some things I'm not aware of. But the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered or inarticulate speech. Now he who searches the hearts of, searches the hearts, my heart, your heart, knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to what? The will of God. Wasn't that the question? How do I know the will of God? Okay, well, the Holy Spirit will make intercession for the saints. Now, where is this happening? Okay, where is the Holy Spirit praying? Does he have an office on Cairo Road? We take a number and we look in. Oh, he's praying for me. Oh, awesome. All right, no. 
The Holy Spirit is the Godhead who has been sent to the earth. And he doesn't live in a temple made by hands anymore. He lives in us. So when the Holy Spirit is praying the perfect will of God, he does it through your mouth, through you, all right? And we can pray by the Spirit in vernacular, a language that we know. We can pray by the Spirit in other tongues, all right? Oh, my, 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 my. This is one of the greatest gifts that God has given to the body of Christ, is a way to seek him and to look to him and to ask of him that when we get to the end of our mind and our human limitations, the Holy Spirit will help us. And he helps us through praying other, in other tongues that he empowers. Remember Acts chapter two, verse four, it says, they began to speak in other tongues as... The Spirit gave them utterance. The Spirit gave them the word. So that is how other tongues happens, is we speak, but the Holy Spirit is giving us utterance. Okay? And among the things that happen here is that we get to know the will of God. We get to pray the will of God when we don't even know. Oh, my, my, what a, an amazing, amazing privilege. All right, so... I hope we've got some homework today. We've got some things that we can apply. And, and thanks to folks who have asked questions because quite of these few, I've, these are questions I've grappled with or I, I still uh, ask myself, all right? And so there are answers in, the, in God, amen? So let's pray. Father, thank you so much that the entrance of your word, it brings light. And thank you for the light that you bring to our lives and that Lord, the rest of our life, as we have questions, God, as we see through a dark, dimly, cloudy, Father, thank you that we can find answers from your word that will clarify, illuminate, and help us to walk on a path that you have for us. I want to ask you a question as we're praying. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, you know, you, you were talking about seeking the Lord and one way, not the only way, but one way, is through praying in other tongues. And you say, Pastor, I, I don't do that. I would love to be able to do that. I'm born again, I love Jesus, but I've not had that Pentecostal experience in my life. Acts chapter two, verse four. What Jesus said, man, don't, do not try to fulfill the will of God for your life without that experience, without the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And, and Peter said this, is what was promised by Joel. I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters, they'll prophesy. And so you would like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Maybe five years ago, 25 years ago, you said, Pastor, you know, I kind of sought that, but nothing happened. Well, we'd love to help you today. We'd love to pray with you today. There's some things just from God's word that you can see simply and as hands are laid upon you, we believe you will be gloriously filled with the Holy Ghost. Speak in other tongues and have this amazing privilege of praying the perfect will of God. So if that's you, you say, Pastor, I wanna be baptized in the Holy Spirit as you described and that I can see from the word. If that's you, simply raise up your hand real, real high. Just raise it up real, real high. We wanna pray together. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. Thank you over here. God bless you. Wonderful. I completely agree with Paul. I would that you all speak in other tongues. Over here, thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Anyone else? Why don't we all stand to our feet? Thank you, ma'am, over here. Everyone that lifted up your hand, you say, Pastor, I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I want that Acts 2-4 experience for me. All right? Just come up front. If you have a Bible with you, a handbag, just grab it. Just come up front. We're going to pray together. God is going to work in your life. This is a gift from God, and he is a giver of good gifts. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, just come up here. Just come up here, right here. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. 
Awesome. Fantastic. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. I'll pour out my spirit. Are we going to go that way? Okay. Here's what I'd like us to do. Congregation, just stretch out your hands to these. And what we're going to do is we want to take you to a place of prayer. And we want you to see some things in the Bible. Uh, because this is not just a, an emotional time. This is a biblical time to receive from God. And then ha <clears throat> hands are going to be laid on you. And you're going to be gloriously filled. But just lift up your hand right now. And just say this. Father, I thank you for the promise of the Holy Spirit that he'll come upon my life for good a new realm of the supernatural I will experience today you'll make me a greater blessing to be able to minister to others fill me to overflowing and when hands are laid on me I fully expect to be filled with the Holy Ghost and as I speak, the Holy Spirit will give me words. I will have a prayer language from you to bless my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Would you just look to your right, just this way. We're going to go to a, a special prayer room, spend some time with you. Oh, so, so thrilled and happy for you. Just, just head this way with us. Thank you so, so, so much. Hallelujah. All right. Now, before we go, would you just pray again? We're just going to believe God's going to minister to another group of people. Nobody's looking around. Let's just bow our heads right now. And if you're in this place, and as you heard from that wonderful testimony by Emmanuel, he says, you know, God sees me as a new creature. He sees me as his child. Now, that's because something happened. The Bible calls it being born again. That God recreates you on the inside. I'm not talking about finding religion. I'm not talking about adopting a new philosophy. But I'm talking about Jesus bringing you into his family. And friend, that doesn't happen by you being religious. It doesn't happen through infant baptism. It doesn't happen through going to a class. It happens because you bow your heart to King Jesus and you say forgive me I put my faith in you wash and cleanse my life and I follow you till the day I die he'll do what he said he'll do he'll make you a brand new person and if you're here today and you've never done that today is your day to be born again if you're far from God maybe you walked with God at a certain season of your life but you left your father's house you went far away you know it's time to come home if that's you come home today to a father who forgive you and so that we can make this decision everyone in this room you say pastor I need to be born again I need to come home to God let's simply lift up your hand and say that's me please pray for me I need to be born again I want to give my heart to Jesus today thank you sir thank you sir anybody else all the way in the back thank you ma'am praise the Lord praise the Lord before we pray anyone else thank you Lord would I ask you, those of you that lifted up your hand, or now you're thinking I should have, just, again, just grab your Bible, maybe something you brought to church with you, and just come and meet me up front. I want to pray with you. I want to watch God do an amazing, amazing miracle in your life today. Can we give these folks a hand clap as they're coming? Oh, for the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Anyone else? Like... You did, maybe you didn't lift your hand, but you said, man, I, I know I need to be here. I need to be made right with God. Thank you, ma'am. Praise the Lord. Can we do this? The Bible says our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. So why don't we lift up one of our hands as we pray today? Because that's where our help comes from. And just say this with me. Say, God, I know that you love me. You sent your only son, Jesus, to die for me. I give you my whole life. Forgive me of every sin. 
wash and cleanse me. Jesus, be the king over my life. I no longer run my life. Jesus, I submit to you. I submit to your word. Save me today. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Would you follow Zalimba? We're going to go to a place of prayer. We'd like to give you a book and just spend a few minutes of your time. If you would just go with Zalimba, thank you so much. God bless you. Amen. Now, if you have a need in your life, you've got some area where you are, are seeking God, a prayer request, you need ministry, our care team is up front and they would love to be able to minister to you. And what they will do is whatever you're facing, we'll look together to God's word and to say, you know what, God, you promised something. And so we can expect you to do what you promised. And so we'd love to be able to spend that time with you to watch God do wonderful and amazing things in your life. Amen. Father, thank you that today we've met with you. We've heard from you. Thank you for renewing our mind and establishing our heart. And Father, thank you that, Lord, as we go from this place, that we know that all of our questions can be met in you, in your wisdom, in your word, by your spirit, Father. And Lord, anoint us and send us to a world, Father, that has so many questions and is seeking in so many different uh, wrong places, God, and make us an answer to, to desperate people's lives this week. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. We love you so much. You are dismissed. We're going to dismiss from the back to the front, and we'd appreciate that. God bless you.